So I wanted to give you not too many demonstrations, but I'm going to show you one right here. Now, this was a prompt that I entered into the playground for OpenAI, and that's a place where you just request something. So you can see what I requested right there. And I'm going to see, show you the result. And I thought I'd show you the result using one of those other categories. So we've got the text generation here. You see that little icon. And we're going to have text generation plus a virtual human reading the poem that GPT-3 created for us. Technology, you've changed the lives and culture, and we're still trying to figure you out. You've given us virtual humans and voice clones that sound just like us. You created AI image generators and large language models that can understand us. You are deep fakes for good, and we're grateful for all you've done. But we're also afraid of what you might do next, and we don't know how to control you. Help us, technology, to use you for good and not for evil. Synthesia. You are at Synthesia, the Synthetic Media Conference. And what we thought we would start off with is first and foremost, a definition. So what is synthetic media? And this is something that was very important to us in the beginning because we had been writing about deep fakes, virtual humans, uh, AI large language models, AI image generators, but they all were sort of separate. And the one that we'd been writing about the most were these synthetic speech engines, voice clones. And what we realized is they were all part of the same market. And so the first thing is you can read it up there, the artificial production, manipulation, and modification of data and media by automated means. That's a partial recasting of a popular quote that comes from Wikipedia. We think that's really good. There's a second part of that quote in Wikipedia that we think is just off. I think people don't understand how broad this market is, but we think this is a good place to start. So that's going to be the focus for today. And I just wanna set the stage here a little bit. So this is not Tom Cruise. Some of you may be familiar with the deep con Tom Cruise uh, uh, programs that are on YouTube. Uh, and that's not Paris Hilton, but they look a lot like it. In fact, if you look at the video, it looks even more like it. We're gonna see so many demos today. I'm not gonna show a demo for everything. This is not Carmelo Anthony, but he was involved in this. He is, this is his digital twin. Carmelo Anthony is an NBA basketball star. And this is quite a bit different than the Tom Cruise and the Paris Hilton we just saw because they weren't involved in that at all. That was just a third party basically taking their likeness, doing a skit for entertainment purposes and for technology demonstration purposes. When you look at Carmelo Anthony and his digital twin, he was part of this from the beginning. They loaded information about his background. You can interact with Carmelo Anthony. And so this is another type of virtual human or digital people, uh, digital twin type of application. Now this guy, he got his voice back. That's Val Kilmer, people will know about him. He lost his voice. We'll talk about that in just a minute, uh, but synthetic media helped him. This image won an art contest, the Colorado State Fair. Uh, the most interesting thing about this maybe is maybe not the beauty of it, although I think people look at it and they think in the digital art category, this was really quite an amazing piece uh, for that art contest, but it was created by Midjourney or is created with the use of Midjourney and just about 10% modification afterwards by a, a developer who I guess now we call an artist. He doesn't call himself an artist, but I call him an artist, a developer who is using Midjourney and he wanted to show what the technology could do. This code right here, uh, that was written by AI. Uh, that is a line of JavaScript that was requested in natural language. And here you go for a timer. This guy is shocked. If you don't know who this guy is, Simon Cowell, the uh, America's Got Talent host, the creator of many different types of media events. He's been astounded about the production quality and the entertainment value of what uh, Synthetic Media Act has done in that show. And I wanted to start with this idea of a baseline. So I just showed you a lot of different examples. I'm going to show you some more. But what we need to do in these new technology spaces is start to think about how to organize it so that we can understand it as a common market. So in the past, we had this idea of these videos and these virtual humans, maybe be virtual human newscasters, and they were pretty dynamic. And then you have things that are static, like GPT-3, when you're typing in 
uh, your text in order to give some text back or maybe some a code. And then you have also in that static world, you have things like Dali and Mid Journey and Night Cafe, which we're going to talk quite a bit about today. And that is for image generation. So again, in that visual category. And then we have audio in the language category. And as I said at the top, that's something that at VoiceBot we've been talking about for a long, long time uh, around synthetic speech engines, voice clones. We're going to see some examples of that today. So I wanted to give you not too many demonstrations, but I'm going to show you one right here. Now, this was a prompt that I entered into the playground for OpenAI, and that's a place where you just request something. So you can see what I requested right there, and I'm going to see, show you the result. And I thought I'd show you the result using one of those other categories. So we've got the text generation here. You see that little icon, and we're going to have text generation plus a virtual human reading the poem that GPT-3 created for us. Technology. You've changed the lives and culture, and we're still trying to figure you out. You've given us virtual humans and voice clones that sound just like us. You've created AI image generators and large language models that can understand us. You are deep fakes for good, and we're grateful for all you've done. But we're also afraid of what you might do next, and we don't know how to control you. Help us, technology, to use you for good and not for evil. Okay, so that was really fun to create. Literally created the poem itself in 10 seconds. I just typed out that sentence. It was actually the second, well, maybe it was, it was the second sentence I typed out. I typed out something I didn't really like the results, so I tried again. Uh, so uh, less than a minute to get that. And what you just heard was straight from GPT-3. There was one, one small change I made, which was really a punctuation change. And that was it. So that was the core of the poem script. And then what I did is I took our ones technology and I loaded it up so a virtual human could read it. And that was a few minutes because I was copying and pasting the text. I was selecting the different images that we were going to use. And then you know I had to create the video, just render it. But essentially that's it. And it's really extraordinary. And it's representative of a couple of themes that we're gonna talk about in a couple of minutes. You've changed the lives and culture. All right. So the next thing I wanted to show you was what I think was a really powerful, uh, really powerful video created around Val Kilmer and Val Kilmer lost his voice. And you'll hear the story here. We all have the capacity to be creative. We're all driven to share our deepest dreams and ideas with the world. When we think of the most talented creative people, they speak to us in a unique way. A phrase we often hear is, having a creative voice. but I was struck by throat cancer. After getting treated, my voice as I knew it was taken away from me. People around me struggle to understand me when I'm talking. But despite all that, I still feel I'm the exact same person, still the same creative soul. A soul that dreams ideas and stories constantly but now I can express myself again. I can bring these dreams to you and show you this part of myself once more, a part that was never truly gone, just hiding away. Okay, really a powerful, a powerful story about using synthetic media to reclaim a voice and that was recreated based on old recordings of Val Kilmer. So they took that data, they created the voice, very lifelike, re very realistic, very different from the quality that we were hearing with these synthetic voices back in 2016, 2017. That particular segment has come a long, long way. 
Also from an image generation standpoint, you'll look at my background right here. This was created by Andrew Herndon using Wombo Art. So again, typed in a few uh, keywords and phrases, got some different types of art back and we selected this. And that was something that took you know, a minute, two minutes, something like that. And uh, we found the, the piece that we liked and we made it the primary background for this event. All right, so I sort of cheated and I told you there were only four segments, but actually there's six because this is actually a really complex market and it's moving very quickly. But we have this idea of static and dynamic and we really want to introduce or explicitly call out this idea of interactive. And so we have the image, video, text, and audio, but then we also have characters and conversation. And when we think of characters, we're thinking of these autonomous digital humans, which Greg Cross from Soul Machines is gonna talk about later today in the show, as opposed to the ones like you just saw, which was the virtual human, which was scripted. We typed in what it was going to say, it rendered the video, and then it spoke. The characters you can actually interact with, they have what you would call a digital brain, a conversation engine in there. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I thought I'd show you a little example of what this looks like in terms of interactivity. Hey there, I'm Lou, the Nestle Toll House cookie coach. Let's kick things off with the classic Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookie recipe. I can take you through it step by step. Or would you rather work on a new one? I'd like to customize my cookie. I really think you're going to like putting your own spin on the classic recipe. To begin, let me know if you've got a dietary preference. I'd like to be gluten-free, please. No gluten. Got it. How do you like your cookie? Thin and crispy. Time to add morsels. Please pick one. Semi-sweet. Okay, so what you just saw there was this interactivity idea. And so when we look at the static dynamic interactive, we've got a lot of companies that are in those spaces. And one of the things we want to give you is a market picture or a market model so that you could start to think about this space holistically and where some of the different companies play. Now, I think what you will find is some of these companies are going to be on the line between one and two things. You see the text and image generation, for example, OpenAI does both. But then there's companies like Midjourney, which just do one of them. You look at the dynamic and interactive uh, space, we're talking about you know companies like DeepBrain, who, who do both. We talk about the interactive characters and conversation. You've got companies like Soul Machines would do both. But you also have companies like Ready Player Me, which only do the characters. They don't do the conversation. Or you've got InWorld, which don't do the characters. They only do the conversation. And so this is a way for you to start thinking about and categorizing the companies in the space and the technologies that they provide. And the question that you should have is, does the market care? And the market does care. So if we look at time and again, companies raising a lot of money in this space that are squarely in the synthetic media space. And some of them are presenting here today. You know, and some of these are you know, a billion dollar valuations, a billion dollars contributed to open AI revenue, I think you could look at. And what this has led to is four things that I want to leave you with. So the first concept or theme that you have to think about in this space is hyper automation. And I don't even call this automation because what the AI is doing here is it's not two, three, or five times more productive. We're talking of hundreds of times, order of magnitude more productive in terms of what they're able to deliver. And so when we think about synthetic media, I, I want you to think about hyper automation as one of the four key themes. The next thing I want you to think about is hyper creation. And again, we're talking about this idea of creating many, many, many versions over and again, and very easily change between them. And those are the results. So there's automation, you can do things much faster, much cheaper. You've got the, you've got the creation so that you can, uh, you have many more things to choose from in a short period of time. You could create all of these things today with humans. And that's the way it would have been done uh, just a year or two ago but you wouldn't have many, to, many options to choose from. The other two concepts I want you to talk about, and these are the inputs. So we just talked about the outputs first, let's talk about the inputs. And the first one is conceptualization. So concepting, you have to create the prompt, you have to create the script, you have to have the idea for what the, the virtual human character is going to be or what the setting is going to be. There is going to continue to be a premium on this 
And it's going to be more and more important because that's how we're going to control the AI. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is curation. Again, another input. Because we have all of these choices, because we have all these concepts, all these things that we can do, there's going to be a premium on curation. It's going to be about selecting the right element. It's going to be about knowing when to do one more iteration, one more trial, as opposed to sticking with what you've got and when to stop. And so those are the really important things that I wanted to share with everybody today. In terms of that, I want you to think about text, images, audio, video, characters, and conversation. And for those of you from the conversation AI industry, one of the things that I pointed out last year when I made my prediction for 2022 or for 2021, was that there was going to be an explosion of investment and activity around virtual humans, and that came to pass last year. This year, we're seeing this explosion on the text generators, the image generators, the continued deployment and adoption on the virtual human side, and the audio side is just moving really quickly as well. When we get into these interactive characters and some of these conversations with the digital brains, this is the next level that you're going to go. And it's really expanded the whole conversational AI industry. The people who are in that industry are going to be in even higher demand now because the synthetic media industry really needs you. So it's been a really fun year so far. I think there's going to be a number of amazing things coming up. We're going to see some great things today. So I'm Brett Kinsella. I'm the founder of voicebot.ai. You guys should all subscribe to the Synthedia newsletter. So Substack or Synthedia.substack.com. Uh, you'll get news every day on this. And you should go to voicebot.ai. Eric and I are writing about these topics as they are core to our mission around educating, around AI, around the use cases, the innovators. Synthedia. Synthedia.substack.com, synthetic media, virtual humans, voice clones, deep fakes, AI image and text generation news and more. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to help us with YouTube's famed algorithm.